The book of Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 4, from verse 8. The book of Judges, chapter 4, from verse 8. Verse 8. Barak said to her, if, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Verse 9. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the head of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Verse 10. And Barak called out Zeb Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and 10,000 men went up at his heels, and Deborah went up with him. Verse 11. Now Heber, the Kenite, had separated from the Kenites, the descendants of Hoabab, the father-in-law of Moses, and he had pitched his tent as far away as the oak in Zananim, which is near Kadesh. Yes. Thank you so much, Bishop. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. We have been studying about the life of Deborah. The life of Deborah. She was the only woman judge in the list of the book of Judges. Hallelujah. So on the first day, we have seen her name meaning. Meaning of her name is Hanibi. And we have seen few characteristics or few qualities does Hanibi have. And we have to learn those characters from the honeybees. Amen. And we have seen seven listed out. Among them, the first and foremost is be busy as a honeybee. We have to be very busy in the serving of Lord as a honeybee. As we have seen, each honeybee visits approximately or averagely 1,000 flowers a day. So how many souls we have been visiting in serving the Lord, we have been discussed like that character is from the honeybees. And later, yesterday, we have been just went to the book of Judges, chapter 4. On the verse 8, we have seen the Barak was replying to the Deborah, If you come with me, I will go with you. If you are not coming with us, we will not go. So, the Lord has already promised that He is going to hand over the Zabin army and the Sisera. The general commander Sisera, he is going to hand over to the Barak. But even though after the promise, the Barak hesitated to go to the war. Amen. And he was asking help to an woman. We cannot see in the Bible a woman was fighting in the war. A woman was participating in the war. Amen. But even though he was a man... We have seen the Barak has been listed in the list of heroes of faith. Amen. In the Hebrew chapter 11, we have seen many faith heroes. So in that place, the Barak has been placed. But coming to this point, he was very faith to the Lord. But to confess that faith, we need a courage. Amen. Instead, we have been discussed about this topic. To confess the faith... We need courage. And later we have went to the life of the Ruth, who has been a Moab. Though he was, she was a Moab, the God has allowed into the Judah, into the Bethlehem, and allowed her into the genealogy of the Christ. She was placed in the family tree of the Jesus Christ. And she was became mother grandmother to the King David and grand-grand-grandmother to the Jesus. How she became, even though she was a Gentile, even though she was an Moabite, how she became and how she has been promoted into the genealogy of the Christ, we have seen her life. Amen? We have seen her sacrificial life. To do that, she has went through very courage. 
Amen. Did you remember? Yeah. And according to the history we have seen, the Ruth was the daughter of Eglon. As the Ruth was not after the, the Ruth's life story was not started after the Samson. But the Ruth, the book of the Ruth or the life of the story of the Ruth was mentioned or they were in the duration of Ehud. In the days of Ehud, in the days of Ehud, there was a famine in the Israel. So this family has moved from Bethlehem or Judah to the Moab. From going back to the Moab, she lost her husband, she lost her two sons. But she got a wonderful daughter-in-law. Amen? And these two daughters were the daughters of that Eglon. She sacrificed everything. The Ruth has sacrificed everything for the Lord. Amen? We can see Naomi went for the wealth. Naomi went for the fertile. Naomi went for the reputation. Naomi went for many other things. But coming to the Ruth, she sacrificed that everything she had. Amen? Naomi went for the famine so she can just sustain in the Moab. But coming to the Ruth's life, she was a very princess. She can do anything she wants. She can marry to a prince. Amen? And she can rule the whole Moab as like Eglon did. She can oppress the Judah people again. She can have that. But she refused everything for the Lord and said, your people will be mine and what God you serve will be my God. Amen? And she came to the and she came to the Bethlehem and she was living with Naomi. She was married to a very gentle man. We can call him as a gentleman. Are you getting me? Not only a man, we can call him as a gentleman, Boyaz. Amen? So now the Ruth was the mother-in-law, sorry, Ruth. Ruth's mother-in-law was Naomi. And as well as she was a daughter-in-law to the one more woman. Do you know who is her? Orpa. You are not getting me. Ruth was a daughter-in-law to Naomi, right? In the same time, she was a daughter-in-law to one more person, Boyas. How she will become daughter-in-law to Boyas? She will become the wife to the Boyas. Mother of Boyaz. And do you know who is the mother of Boyaz? Rahab. Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. The gospel of Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. Can we read that bishop? The gospel of Matthew. Verse 5. The gospel of Matthew chapter 1. And Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab. And Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth. And Obed, the father of Jesse. Yes. Salmon, the father of Boyaj, by Rahab. Amen. Initially, she was a prostitute in Jericho. We all know that. But do you know how she saved all the Joshua and others? How she saved, we have seen. And how she was being saved from the Israel's army with a scarlet rope. Yes. Scarlet rope. Not a red color. We have seen what does the scarlet mean. Did you remember? The blood of the Christ. She has been saved. Her family has been saved by the scarlet color. And this is the woman later came to Judah and she has been married to Solomon and gave to a birth to a gentleman called Boyaz. And this Boyaz has married to the Ruth. And Ruth 
has birth to Jesse and David like that we have seen. Amen? So what a wonderful woman we have seen in this book of Ruth. How she got this much of privilege means, to got this privilege, she has gone through many sufferings. Amen? This is not a one-day achievement. It's not a one-day achievement. You are getting me? It's not a one-day achievement. <clears throat> Moreover, this achievement was got after her death. You are getting me? She got the achievement after her death. After her death, David was born. David was, became a king. After her death, Jesus was born. She never insisted for that achievement. She just did what she can do for the Lord. She just did what she can do for the Lord. She didn't look for the achievements. She didn't look good for the benefits. But a God was seeing all these things. So he never forgotten what the Ruth was did. Amen. Did you remember the God didn't forgot what the Rachel did also? Rachel. Did you remember? Yes, even after her death, the God remembered what she did. In the same way, the God remembered what the Ruth did when she was alive. Amen? In the same way, we are going to get achievements and our benefits after that we was looking for that. Amen? Let us clap for the professor. Yes, and I have said yesterday that I am going to show one more woman. Did you remember? The first one we have seen is Deborah, a courageous woman. The second one, Ruth. The third one, yeah, we will discuss later. Later means by today itself, we will discuss that later. But first we will complete our chapter, the fourth chapter. Amen. Definitely by the end of this class, I will show you the third woman. Amen. Who was very courageous. Who was very courageous. Yes. Coming to the, our topic, the book of Judges, chapter 4, from verse 9 onwards, and she said, I will surely go with you, nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of an woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh, and Barak called out, Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh and 10,000 men went up at his heels and Deborah went up with him. Amen. Now we can see the God has commanded Deborah and Barak to gather 10,000 people. Amen. And before that was the Deborah is saying, Barak, did you remember? Did you remember or did you forgotten that the God promised us that he is going to hand over the job in Sarm and Sisera. Amen. So what they have to do is, they have to gather the army. The God didn't mention about doing the war. You are getting clear? We are going to the war now. So they never did the war. They did the war, but what the God wants to is, to gather 10,000 men and to lead the Sisera's army to a nearby river. It's called Kishon. Kishon. The verse 7. The book of Judges, chapter 4, verse 7. Verse 7. And I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Yes, I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Hallelujah. So we are going into depth of the book of JJ, chapter 4 and the verse 7. What the God wants to do with the Israel's army, with the 10,000 men is, what the job or role of these 10,000 men or the Barak is, they have to gather the 10,000 people. Amen? 
then after they have to go to a mountain called tabor tabor amen then why the mount tabor means the sisera's army will be able to see that the israel's people were rebelling against this amen from down side they cannot see if they are climbing very high so they can see a very group of people that they are going to rebel against the sisera amen then after what the 10000 people must do is they should not carry the swords and should not uh, went into the fight directly what the role is to do the god said the debora and the god will be at re- river by she said i will wait by the river side you gather the 10 of 10000 men and bring the sisera army after bringing the sisera army near to the river kishon then the god is going to hand over the sisera into the hands of barak are you confused no amen so i think we can continue the below verses from verse 12 verse 12 when sisera was told that barak the son of abinam had gone up to mount tabor 13 sisera called out all his chariots chariots of iron and all the men who were with him from harosheth gahagoin to the river kishon verse 14 and deborah said to barak up for this is the day in which the lord has given sisera into your hand does not the lord go out before you so barak went down from mount abor with 10000 men following him verse 15 and the lord routed sisera and all his chariots and all his army before barak by the edge of the sword and sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot yes did you got anything yeah i will explain up to that point so what the god wanted to do with these people okay these 10000 people were gathered from the tribes of zebulon and naphtali why only the zebulon and naphtali why only the zebulon and naphtali because these are the main tribes that were oppressed by the kanan or king zabin hallelujah can you display that map uh, why they gathered only the people of zebulon and naphtali means these are the main tribes that were being tortured more severely by the zabin army rather than other tribes these tribes are very near to this is the same map which we are using from day 1 to till now hallelujah don't get confused this is the same map which we are using from the day 1 to till now to understand the book of judges to understand the book of joshua and even the book of first samuel second samuel we need this map hallelujah this is the tribes map so can you yes we can see zebulon with an purple color amen and yellow shaded color naphtali the dark yellow you can see a place named hazor h a z o r are you able to see that place so where that hazor place was situated in the midst of naphtali yes now coming to the book of judges chapter 4 verse 2 the book of judges chapter 4 verse 2 verse 2 and the lord sold them into the hand of jabin king of canaan who reigned in hazor who the, reigned in hazor the commander of his army was sisera who lived in harosheth gahagoin yes this king jabin was ruling a part called hazor and this hazor was in the place of midst of naphtali and zebulon is very near to naphtali you are getting me 
So they were being very severely oppressed by the Zabin, Zabin's army. So in order to fight for them, they have to come at the first. You are getting me? They have to sacrifice their lives more than any other tribes. Because there, it is their place. It is their hometown. So that's why they gathered 10,000 people of army from, mainly from Jebulun and Naphtali. Now they gathered the army and what happened is the Barak has led the army with the Deborah to the Mount Tabor. After reaching the Mount Tabor, what they did is the Sisera got the news that Barak is being gathered 10,000 army to attack against the Sisera. He got the news. Who got the news? Sisera. Sisera got the news that Barak has been rebelling against the Sisera with 10,000 men. After hearing this, they just gathered his 900 chariots, iron chariots. I think each chariot can kill 1,000 people or 100 people at least. Amen. They are very strong, the iron chariots. I think there is no need of 900 chariots also. They can just take 100, 200 chariots, enough for the 10,000 people. You are getting me? If the army is formed in like a square shape, if the iron chariots was rolling into the midst of the army, what happened? They will just die. Amen. We cannot bear with the even with the wood chariot. Our flesh would not bear with the even with the wood chariot. But the chariots were made with the iron. If they just go into the midst of the army, all the people will die. Without throwing the spears, without throwing the arrows. So what he did is he gathered 900 chariots of army and he was come, came to this place. From top of the mountain, the Barak can see Sisera and Sisera can see Barak. Are you clear up to this? Yes. After seeing this, what happened is the Barak has just run away from Tabor. They just run away from Tabor. They thought, and the Sisera thought, oh, they are running away, they were escaping. They thought, that we are not having the iron chariots. So what the Sisera did is, Sisera just followed the Barak. You are getting me? Yes. And this Barak, where he led to, he led to the place, Kishon River. Hallelujah. Amen. I have wrote here Kishon River, but it was left to the Tabor. This is the Tabor. This is Sisera's army and this is Hazor. This is Naphtali place. This is Jebulun tribe. Did you remember the map? This is the map which we are having Hazor. So after coming to this, there is a river here by side, Kishon. So the Barak has been tried to explain that to a Sisera that they have been escaping. Amen? So I think they fooled them. And the Barak with 10,000 army they came to this Kishon River. They just crossed the Kishon River. Barak and 10,000 people and Deborah crossed the Kishon River and they were followed by the Sisera army. Now what happened is was 15 Verse 15, and the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army before Barak by the edge of the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot. Yes. How the Sisera's army were routed, how they were confused. In some translations it was mentioned as confused. How they were being confused? After coming to this point, are you getting me? We are up, clear up to this point. 
they just brought the whole Sisera and his army to a river called Kishon. But at the riverside, what happened? How they got confused at the riverside? What they did to confuse the Sisera's army? Amen? It was not mentioned in this fourth chapter, but mentioned in the fifth chapter, verse 20 and 21. This, this is the same chapter which was been a song sang by the Deborah on the fifth chapter, verse 20 and verse 21. Verse 20. From heaven, the stars fought. From their courses, they fought against Sisera. 21. The torrent Kishon swept them away. The ancient torrent, the torrent Kishon, march on my soul with might. So what happened is, here we can see on the verse 20, from heaven the stars fought. From their courses they fought against Sisera. The torrent Kishon swept them away. The ancient torrent, the torrent Kishon march on my soul with my might. So what happened at the river Kishon is they just crossed the river, the Barak and Deborah and his 10,000 men, while the people of Sisera while the iron chariots of Sisera were trying to cross the river, the river or the stream just became a raging river. Amen. Let us clap to the Lord. And here we can see, it was mentioned, the stars were fighting from the sky. Why it was mentioned as this stars means, from the history it says the hailstones were falling from the sky. Hailstones are just stones you can say sometimes. But in, we can see these hailstones in the book of Revelation. Amen? The hailstones were falling from the sky. So that's why they, she mentioned stars. If a real star would have fallen, uh, there will be no uh, Kishon River, there will be no Deborah's army, there will be no Judah area also. You are getting me? The star is very big. It's even bigger than Israel, it's even bigger than very big countries. So what the Sisera was, uh, what the Deborah was trying to say is, just like stars, meteoroids or hailstones were falling from the sky, they were fighting against the Sisera's army for the Deborah. Not only that, why the God, use, God is using these hailstones, water, and uh, in history it was mentioned it was raining while the Barak has crossed the river, it started raining. Amen? It started raining, the storms were coming, the hailstones were falling from the sky. The stream has been changed into a raging river. All these things happened. Why the God used these things to fight against Sisera? Means, did you remember what the Canaan people worshipped to the idol? Name. Name of the idol the Canaan people worship. You have forgotten. Baal, Baal, and they worship the Baal for they thought the Baal is the god of storms, the Baal is the god of raining, they thought the ba Baal is god of water, they thought the Baal is god of sky. Amen. And they think the Baal will travel on the clouds. He was traveling on the clouds. They were just assume it. So why they, God used these things means they worshipped these things. They thought these things can save them. Amen? Yes. They thought this creation will save them. They thought by serving, by worshipping this creation, 
it would have helped them in the war but what happened is they turned against them amen why the god used this thing means yes the people of canaan will worship the baal for these things and the god used these things against the people of canaan and did you remember why the god used the 10 plagues against the egypt each plague describes a god of egypt and the first one is nile river amen on the dark on the day of the dark they worship the sun the 10 plagues were formed to prove that the god is none other than yahweh amen there is no other god so this was the plan of the god amen this was unknown to the barak this was unknown to the 10000 people amen that's why the barak was hesitated to bring and he thought that he has to fight in the war but the god wanted to do is just participate in the war there is no need of doing the war there is no need of doing the war with the swords with the spears just they need to participate in the war but to do that he was asking a help to an woman amen so the god told to deborah deborah said to barak that bring the sisera's army to the kishon river so deborah said barak go and bring the army of sisera i will wait by this kishon river on the verse 7 she said i will wait by this kishon river because god has said he is going to do a miracle at this kishon river amen so he refused to go with uh, he refused to go without deborah so deborah also came she climbed the mount tabor she was seeing the sisera's army and she was again coming back to the kishon river then the battle was beginned all the armies of sisera were been washed away in the river amen let us clap to the lord only only sisera has been remained even sisera's horses also been washed away from the river only sisera has been remained amen so from then what happened is from verse 15 the book of jj chapter 4 verse 15 verse 15 and the lord routed sisera and all his chariots and all his army before barak by the edge of the sword and sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot verse 16 and barak pursued the chariots and the army to Harosheth Hagoim, and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. Not a man was left other than Sisera. Amen. All the army who brought, the Sisera brought, was been washed away in the river. Only the Sisera has been remained. And what happened to Sisera, we can see from the verse 17. Verse 17. But Sisera fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin the king of Azor and the house of Jabir, and the house of Heber the Kenite. 18. And Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not be afraid. So he turned aside to her into the tent. And she covered him with a rug. Verse 19. And he said to her, Please give me some little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. Verse 20. And he said to her, Stand at the opening of the tent, and if any man comes and asks you, Is anyone here? Say no. Verse 21, but Jael, the wife of Heber, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand. Then she went softly to him and dropped the peg into his temple until it went down into the ground while he was lying fast asleep from weariness. 
So he died. Verse 22. And behold, as Barak was pursuing Sisera, Jael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So he went into her tent, and there lay Sisera dead with the tent peg in his temple. Yes. Amen. So what happened is, the whole army of Sisera were being washed away in the river. The only remained is Sisera. Not even his horses, not even his chariots. Amen. So what he did is, he just escaped with the foot and he went to a tent. He went to a tent. This tent was belongs to Heber. And Heber is an husband. Wife is Zael. Amen. You are getting me? So why he preferred to go to this tent rather to his kingdom? He was escaped from the riverside. Amen. If he stays at a place, he knows the Barak has been following him to kill. So why he preferred to stay here in the tent rather going to his town, rather going to his kingdom? So on the verse, I think we can see on the verse 17, we can see here like a peace between Heber and Zabin. Can we read that verse, Bishop? 17th verse. Verse 17. But Sisera fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. Yes, there was a peace between Zabin the king and the Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. So what does it mean? Why it was mentioned about that incident? Why it has to be mentioned there is a peace between the Zabin and the Heber? You are getting me? Why it was mentioned? Because to understand the situation here, that was was written. Amen? And what happened is, was 11. Same the book of Judges, verse 11. Verse 11, chapter 4, verse 11. Now Heber the Kenite had separated from the Kenites the descendants of Hobab, the, the descendants of, of Hobab, the father in law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far away as the oak in Zananin, which is near Kadesh. Okay. From verse 11 we have seen, and from verse 17 we have seen. So what the author was trying to say is, here first he was said, this Heber was belong to a tribe Kenite. And do you remember what these Kenites did? They separated from the nation and they sacrificed everything and they came to live on the place of you have forgotten Judah not only Judah in the wilderness of Judah now you are getting me did you remember on one day we have discussed who is Kenites there was it is a tribe belongs to the Moses father-in-law Hobab amen and after getting saved, the Moses father in Slas, whole family or whole tribe just left their towns, left their nation, and they came to live with the Judah people in the wilderness. Amen? Hallelujah. So what happened is there were people living in the wilderness, these Kenites. But from these Kenites group, these Heber left the wilderness and came to live nearby Kedesh. Near a place called Kedesh. You are getting me? The Heber is the only one who left from the wilderness. He left the nation. He came to live in the wilderness. But after few years, he left the wilderness and came to 
live a in the nearby place called Kedesh. There he planted a tent. He built a tent. There he was living with his wife called Zael. Are we clear up to this? Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Yes. So why the Sisera went to this tent rather than the to his house or rather than to his kingdom means the first thing is he was very exhausted. Amen. And the second thing is there was a peace between the Heber and Zabin. What does it mean? Means this Heber who came from the wilderness. He was built a tent and what he was doing is he was supplying the weapons to the Zabin and to the Israel people. You are getting me? He was a maker of armors. He was a maker of weapons or swords, anything. So he came from there and he lived at a place called Kedesh. From there he was supplying to Zabin. From there he was supplying to Barak. Amen. That's why the Zabin and the Heber have a peace. They were having a peace. Hallelujah. Heber was not a slave under the Zabin. Heber was not a slave under the Zabin. He was just like a partner to the Zabin. He helped Israel, he helped Zabin army to suffer the Israels, to torture the Israels with the weapons. Amen. So what he thought is, he saw a temple, he saw a tent. So he knows because he is the general commander. He is the one who made the deal. Hallelujah. He is the one who made the deal with Heber. So he thought Heber can save him. And he went into the tent. While he was going, the Zael was outside the tent and she was calling, My Lord, my Lord, Sisera, you can come and rest here. Amen. And while the Sisera came to her tent, he was very exhausted. He asked water. So what the Zael did is, Zael offered milk rather than water. Not only milk, in the book of JJ chapter 5, I think was 25. Can you read it, Bishop? Verse 25, I think so. Verse 25. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought him cards of noble's bowl. Yes. Not only the milk, the rich milk. In the chapter 5, verse 25, it was written... In some NIV translation, it was written, cream, very rich cream of the milk. Amen. The which was very precious, the cream which we get from the milk. She offered that cream and the milk to the Sisera. He was asking the water. She was giving more than enough. Amen. So what the Sisera will think now? He will think he can just rest. You are getting me? Because there is no other safer place than this Hebes. Because they was having a peace between the Heber and the Zabin army. And he thought Zael was on Sisera's side. If she was not on Sisera's side, she would have refused to give the water. So why she gave the milk means to assume that Sisera that Zael was in on her side. Amen. After drinking the milk and after drinking the cream, he was very exhausted. His stomach is very full. He just slept. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if we eat a lot of food, huh? after exhausted, what we do is just we collapse. And he thought it was very safe place. While he was going to sleep, he said, if anyone comes to this tent, say, I didn't see in Sisera. I didn't see in Sisera. Who is Sisera? So he said that what to Zael, and she said, yes, I, I will do that. Indeed, she was never lied to the Sisera. 
if anyone comes and asks, she will say yes. She will say no, there is, I didn't see Sarah. But she, she hide it that she is going to kill him. Amen? After he was going to sleep, he just took a nail. 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 Do you know nail? Yes. yes. Nail and she took a hammer because the women are not very proficient in using the hammer and the nail. But how she was carrying the hammer and the nail means it is her work. Now you are getting me? She can carry a spoon, <laughs> she can carry a bowl like that. Amen. But it is her, her work. It is her husband's work. So she knows how to carry a hammer, how to carry a nail. Amen. So what happened is, after he's gone to sleep, she just put the nail like this and hammer. Hit. <laughs> just one shot. The nail went into the head, it came to the other side and the Sisera died at very instinct. Amen. Just, she put the nail, she just dug the hammer with the nail and the nail went into the head of the Sisera. He just died instantly. And from this verse we can say, chapter 4, verse 9, I think. Can we read that, Bishop Linnet? The book of Judges, chapter 4 and the verse 9. Verse 9, and she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Yes. This was said before it was happened. Amen. The Deborah has said that the Barak is not going to kill the Sisera. But the Sisera is going to die within the hands of a woman. Amen. She was told on the chapter 4, verse 9, and it was happened in the verse 21. It was happened in the verse 21. As she said, the Barak was just following Sisera to kill Sisera because whole the army of Sisera has been washed away. So he was just following the Sisera to kill. But while he was coming, again, the Zael came out of the tent and she called Barak. You are getting me? What the Sisera asked to Zael to do? What the Sisera asked Zael to do? If anyone comes and asks, she should say no. But Barak was not asking. You are getting me? She was not lying. She just went with her free will. Never Barak asked about the Sisera. The Zael went to the Barak and said, Come on, come on, I will show you the Sisera. <laughs> yeah, can we read the verse 22? Verse 22. And behold, as Barak was pursuing Sisera, Jael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So he went into her tent, and there lay Sisera dead, with the tent peg in his temple. Yes. Can we read the 23 and 24 verse also, Bishop? Verse 23. So on that day, God subdued ja God subdued Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the people of Israel. 24. And the hand of the people of Israel pressed harder and harder against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they destroyed, ja until they destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Yes. What happened is, if the Barak was coming and uh, asking to Zael, she would have said no. Amen? Are you getting me? Because she was promised to that Sisera. 
But Barak was not asking. She intentionally went to the Barak and said, come on, I will show you the man who you are pursuing. And she would never mentioned about Caesar also. I will show you the man who you are pursuing. And after coming in, he seen that the Caesar was lying on the ground with a nail on his head. Amen. After that, what happened is the Zabin was still alive. The Zabin didn't came to the war. Only the Caesarea and his army came to the war. The Zabin was in his mansion. Amen. What happened is the Zabin has been oppressed the Israelis for how many years? You have forgotten. For how many years the Zabin has oppressed the Israelis? For 20 years. In Othniel, 8 years. In Yehud, 18 years. Shemgar is unknown. And in the time of Deborah, the Zabin oppressed for 20 years. Now what happened is, Zabin has lost his general commander. He lost his army. He lost everything. Now what is happening is, the tribe of Israel were approaching the Zabin. Amen. Can we read that verse 24? One second, Bishop. Verse 24. Verse 24. And the hand of the people of Israel pressed harder and harder against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Now, it was the turn of Israel. Now they were oppressing the Zabin. They oppressed very harder, harder, harder. So that's how the Zabin also died. Amen. So they got relieved from the Zabin, the king of Canaan. And this is the judge of the fourth, the, sorry, yes, the fourth judge, Deborah. Amen. She was a woman. Even though she was a woman, she fought for her people. Amen. She shown faith in the God. At the same time, she has shown the courage. She has shown her courage in serving the Lord. Amen. Now we will go to the topic of courageous women. Now we are going to the third woman. Who may be the third woman? Zael. Yes. But we'll go further than Zael. A man who, a, sorry, a woman who was very courageous than Zael. Who is Mary? She was the mother of? Yes. How can we say that she was very courageous? You might think in that way. Amen? But if we go through the life of Mary, it was also not so easy. Amen? After Jesus came to the ministry, after he was doing the ministry, the God, then the people of Israel said to the Mary, how blessed you are that you have gave your birth to the Lord. You are getting me? But before that, what happened is, we are going to see, I think, you all know the story. We should not get into the verse, I think. Just I will we'll read the verse. The Gospel of Luke Chapter 1, verse 26 onwards. Verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth. 27. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. 28. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. 29. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and she tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. 30. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. 31. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. 32. He will be great, and he will be called 
the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him will give to him the throne of his father David. Thirty three, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Yes. The, for the kingdom of Jesus there will be no end. Okay? Yes. Now coming to this part, they, you have seen on the sixth month, why it was mentioned means Jesus was six months younger than the John the Baptist. Amen? Jesus was six months younger than the John Baptist. John Baptist was the six months older than the Jesus. Amen? So, the angel appeared to the Mary and said, now you are going to conceive a baby and that baby is none other than the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So she asked her, I'm a virgin, how would I get? And do you know, at what incident this angel was appeared means after the, is it after the wedding? After the engagement. Amen? It's not after the wedding. Why I am showing this verse means the life of the Mary was also not so easy. Amen? They were very courageous. Men also in the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. But as we are discussing about the Deborah, I am just showing the women who are very courageous to serve the Lord. On the first we have seen Deborah, next we have seen Ruth. Now we are going to the Mary. When coming to the life of the Mary, it was so, so, so much hard. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 23, I think. Can we read that verse, Bishop? Verse chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 22, verse 23. If there is a betrothed virgin and a man meets her in the city and lies with her, 24, then you shall bring them both out of the gate of, the, of that city and you shall stone them to death with, the, with stones. The young woman, because she did not cry for help, though she was, she was in the city, and the man, because he violated his neighbor's wife. Yes, thank you so much, Bishop. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. Why it is not so easy means, the first thing she did is, she agreed to conceive the baby. Amen? Hallelujah. Why it was so e not so easy means, according to the law of Moses, if a woman who has been gone to the engagement, before the wedding, the virgin woman, if she got the pregnant, you are getting me? Now we have read, read the verse 23 and 24 from the Deuteronomy chapter 22. If she got pregnant, then what they have to do is, they have to bring her into the city and they have to stone on the woman, not only on the woman, on the man also. Hallelujah. She knows about this law. She knows it might be very help if uh, the angel was appeared after the wedding. You are getting me? But after the wedding, if it is happened, we cannot say it was uh, done by the Holy Spirit. Are, are you getting me? There would be many uh, consequences and many disbeliefs also. That's why what happened is before the wedding, but in order to that, she has to go through the sufferings. She has to go through stoning also. The people will stone at Mary. How you can do this after having this engagement? You are getting me? So I think the parents were forsaken him. The relatives were forsaken her. The parents were forsaken her, I think so. The relatives were forsaken her. And now the husband is also going to forsaken her, but the angel appeared. Amen? Hallelujah. 
The parents forsaken, relatives forsaken. How can she do that? How can do she do that sin? And the husband is also going to do forsaken her. But the angel appeared. And I think while she was going to the market, the people were seen with, with very ugly face on to her. Amen? I think the people of Israel were forsaken her. If she goes to buy any vegetables in the market, she won't get, I think. You are getting me? We can see an incident in the Gospels that the woman was brought to the Jesus that they were going to throw at women. Amen? It was very common on that day. The people will throw at the women if they commit sin like that. They don't know about this Holy Spirit and about the angel appeared. What they might think? Are you getting me? The angel was not appeared on a very big stage or very big stadium. The angel appeared very night and it was very secret. And it was only known to the Joseph and Mary. So generally, the people of Israel might think in that way. You are getting me? Will you agree with me? Yes. Only the truth will as known to these people only. And to the shepherds and to the four wisdom men. Yes. She was going through very much of suffering. Do you know for how long? Do you know for how long means? Not until nine months. Not until nine months. Not for two years. It is for 30 years. After Jesus entered into the ministry, now the people were praising the Mary. You are getting me? Up to that, the Jesus didn't start the ministry. They don't know about the Jesus. They don't know about the miracles of the Jesus. He started his ministry at the age of 30. Then the miracles has been took place. Now they were believing that the Jesus is the Savior. Then after, they were praising the Mother Mary. How blessed you are. But up to for 30 years. Not one year, two years, three years, nine months, ten months. You are getting me. The sufferings the Mary gone through is very unimaginable. Amen. I think that's why if we see a, the mother Mary was walking, the husband will be beside her. If you see any of us, you will be seeing husband beside her. Amen. If there is no husband beside her, the people were ready to attack the Mary. You can see any of us, if the Mary is walking on the streets, yes, there is an husband. The people are very ready to do it. She suffered for 30 years in order to give us the Savior. You are getting me? In order to give us the Savior, in order to give us the benefits of the crucifixion, she has went through the sufferings for 30 years. And do you know what needed and what she did is for, do that, for to do that, she needed courage. She needed courage to accept it. She needed courage to stand in front of people of Israel. Hallelujah. That was not so easy. We cannot do it. I think I cannot do it for one month also. How can I uh, hide myself for one month? But how she was hiding herself for 30 years from the people? This was very uh, spread in the news so throughout the Israel. But she knows, if I am not going to bear this suffering, we are not going to get the salvation. Amen. Let us clap to the Lord. She have a faith, but at the same time, she had a courage to proclaim it. She had a courage to stand in front of Israel's. Amen? So, as we are discussing about the 
courage, I will just note down a few points. Does we have enough courage to run away from the scenes? Does we have enough courage to proclaim what we believe? Does we have enough courage to sacrifice ourselves for Christ? Just uh, a word, does we have enough courage? Just uh, what I thought I just wrote on the board. Because believing in Jesus is good. But at the same time, does we have enough courage to do all these things? Amen? Hallelujah. I think after you just write it down, I will just explain. I have just wrote in my way. You can just write in your way also. You can just write in your way also. The first thing is, does we have enough courage? This is not W, this is U. Does we have enough courage to run away from the scenes as like Joseph? Amen? To run away from the scenes, does we have enough courage? Does we have enough courage to proclaim what we believe? Amen? In some times, in some situations, we hesitate to believe to, we hesitate to proclaim what we believe. You are getting me? You are getting me? Regarding the doctrines, regarding anything, we sometimes hesitate to proclaim what we believe. Amen? Sometimes we hesitate to sacrifice ourselves. Yes, to sacrifice we need a courage. If the sword comes to our neck, does we keep our courage to sacrifice ourselves for the God? Does we have enough courage to glorify the God at any circumstances? Does we have that enough courage to glorify the Lord at any circumstances? Even if we are going through the troubles, even if we are going through the anything, does we have any courage to go through the sufferings gone through like Ruth and Mary? Amen? And does we have enough courage to be, keep our holiness until Lord Jesus arrives? Amen? And does we have enough courage to pray to the gospel at any circumstances? There are many things. Faith, as we are doing, to proclaim the faith. Hallelujah. To proclaim the faith. To keep our holiness. To run away from the sins. To go through the sufferings, does we have enough cover? Does we have enough courage, as like Deborah, as like Ruth, and as like Mary? Amen. They are just showing us we have did many things. As we are even women, we have gone through these many things. Then what about us? Amen. Even though they were women, they did many for the sake of Christ. Amen. Yes, thank you so much.